Hi and welcome to this part. On this part, we are going to talk about the C sharp decision statements. Now, decision statements are used to control the flow of execution of the code. And these statements are used to execute a part of code based on conditions. So, let's say if a condition is true, then the code will be executed, otherwise, it won't. In C sharp, we have four major types of decision statements, and these are if statement, if else statement, else if statements, and the last one is the switch statement. So let us start with the first one, if statement. Now, if statements are used when you want to execute or exclude a piece of code, if a certain condition is met or not. Let us have a look at one example. In here, at line 9, we have defined an integer variable, and we have assigned to this integer variable the value 10. Then on the next line, by using the if condition, which is a decision statement in C sharp, we check if the value of the number variable is greater than 0. And if the value is greater than 0, then our compiler will go inside this block. And this line of code will be executed, which simply shows to the users that this number is a positive number. Then in line 14, we simply stop the application if we run it in a debug mode. But if you don't want to have this line, you can simply remove it and then run the application by pressing the Ctrl F5. And the next statement we have said that is the if else statement. So let us go back to our previous example and see how we can modify it to change it to an if else statement. So in the last example, we would go inside this block only when the number is greater than zero. But what if the number is less than zero and we want to display the same way a message to our users? In this case, we would use an if else statement. So if this condition is true, then display this message. Otherwise, so else, display another message which says it is not a positive number. So let us save the changes and change the value of number from 10 to minus 10. And then either run the application by pressing F5 or remove this line of code and press Ctrl F5. So in here we see the result that it is not a positive number. Our application runs fine so far, but we are just checking if a number is positive or not. But we know that the number can be zero as well. So we have positive numbers, we have zero, and we have the negative numbers. What if you want to print different statements depending upon the value of the number. So, if it's a positive number, we say that the number is greater than zero. If it's a negative number, we say that the number is less than zero. And if it's zero, we say that the value is zero. So, this is the case when we would use the else if statement. For that, we would write in here if number is greater than zero, else if number is less than zero. In this case, we can display the it is a negative number message. And then at the end, we are left with the only option, which is that the number is zero. So for that, we can write else it is zero. So the else if statement is different from the if else statement, because by using the else if statement, we can add as many if conditions as we want. So in this case, we have only three possible states. So the number can either be positive, negative, or zero. But imagine you are working with strings or enums, which we are going to talk later about them. In this case, it would be much easier to work with else if rather than create a lot of if conditions separate from each other. Change the value of number to zero. Save the changes 
and run the application one more time by pressing the Ctrl F5. It is zero is a result that we are going to see on the screen. If a large number of if and else if statements are required to implement the logic, it is more convenient to use switch statements. So let us go back to our solution and create an example with the switch statement. So let us check for the day of the week. I'm just going to write in here string day is equal to Tuesday. If I would have to check the value of the day by using an else if statement, this is what I would have to write. So in here we see that we have a lot of else if conditions. Now this is not the best way to compare strings, but that is not the intention of this part. With a switch statement, things get much easier. So let us convert this else if statement into a switch statement. For that we are going to start with the switch keyword. I write in here switch and then I'm going to check the value of the day. And then instead of using if and else if conditions, I create cases. So which is my first case? Case. So in case the value is Monday, then just display to the users it is Monday. As soon as you have met a case, you can get out of the switch statement by using the break keyword. And then let's do the same for all the other cases. But what if none of these cases is found? What should we do? In an if else statement or in an else if statement, we use the else keyword to display a result when none of the previous conditions is met. But in switch statement, we don't have else keyword, but we have the default one. So for that, let us just write in here default. This means that if none of the cases is found, execute this line of code, which says it is a weekend. And then break to get out of this switch statement. So let us save the changes and run this application by pressing the Ctrl F5. And here we have the result from the else if statement and from the switch statement. So guys, thank you for watching and see you on the next one.